Hey, 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 it's Tuesday, and we got trading on Friday. This week, it's how to close a deal. Uh, make sure that uh, we get that down. How to close a deal on Friday. Good morning, Andrew. Twice up there. Team David Meltzer. Good morning, Jakey Bakey. Right back onto it, Justin Pugh. The Justin Pugh in the house. Uh, sorry to my Chargers last night. Sorry to the Dodgers as well. Jake Shear. Good morning. I had emailed you. Never heard back. Uh, what's going on, everybody? It is time. Let's get some questions going. Why is everybody so slow today? It's Tuesday. Come on. We got the rest of our lives and the rest of the day to get stuff done. There's Team David Meltzer. If you missed the manifestation training, if you missed the worthiness training, if you missed the ego training, if you missed the pitch training, if you missed the sales training, all you got to do is email me, david at dmelzer.com. It's right there below, pin below, david at dmelzer.com. And if you haven't joined my text community, it's easy, 949-298-2905. Text me, you will get me. Let's do this. Oh, wow, the questions came in fast. Thank you, everyone. When did you know you were a natural born salesman? When people started telling me, wow, how do you do that? You're amazing. You can sell ice to Eskimos. I tell everyone to keep your ears like a rabbit, way open. Listen for people to tell you, wow, you're really good at that. How do you do that? When you hear that, you know that's a quantum memory that you have. It's something that's embedded in your unconscious competency. It's embedded in your personality traits, your characteristics, your obsessions and addictions. So keep those rabbit ears up. Listen for people saying, how do you do that? That's amazing. Uh, and you'll see some of your capabilities, your skill that was inherited, your knowledge that was inherited, and of course, align with your quantum desire that you must be what you can be. So uh, I started hearing that about five years old when I went on a mission to make money to buy my mom a house and a car to make her happy since money was the only reason and only time that we weren't happy as a kid. Kathy, welcome. I saw you there yesterday. Thank you so much for all that you do. Kathy Cardenas, one of the best PR people in the world. My girl, Cheryl, good to see you. Uh, miss seeing you at events, though, I'll tell you that. Uh, here we go. What are three things you must include in a sales pitch? There's five things that you must include in a sales pitch. One, credibility. Number one thing you can include is credibility. If you're 100% credible, people will do exactly what you say. Two, emotional attachment. People buy on emotion for logical reasons. The third one is to quantify and be able to articulate and quantify the reasons. Utilizing features and benefits as support, but not overselling, backend selling, manipulating, and lying to people. And then fourth is to quantify the impact, to show impact. Uh, very important for other people to see impact and to understand and align or have it be synergistic or supplementary to that alignment. And then finally, capabilities. You've got to be able to illustrate and articulate the capabilities that you have, the skills that you have, the knowledge, the what and the who. And then finally, the desire. That's an integration between your skills, knowledge, and desire is your capabilities. And that desire, I'm always investing in someone that must be what they can be. Uh, Jeff Fenster is one of those kids. He must be what he can be. I throw my money at uh, Justin Gian Grande uh, from Network Advisors. He must be what he can be. There's a couple entrepreneurs out there. Cindy Eckert, she must be what she can be uh, for sure. There's some great ones. Holly Lau. Uh, their list goes on and on. But what all they have over everyone else is they must be what they can be. Are you one of those people with skills, knowledge, and desire aligned and synergistic and supplementary? And can you articulate those? Well, those are five things. What's the difference between eagle and journeyman? Great question. An eagle is someone who naturally flies high. A journeyman is someone who every single day enjoys the consistent, persistent pursuit of their potential. And that potential is far less than an eagle. An eagle has high potential. So LeBron James is an eagle in basketball. And, uh, you know, Steve Kerr may have been a journeyman in, uh, ba in basketball. And so, but if you can find someone that has eagle potential and takes a journeyman's work ethic to enjoy the consistent, persistent pursuit of their potential, like Kobe Bryant, then you get an extraordinary being like Kobe Bryant. Hopefully those sports uh, stories don't throw you off. What's your favorite part about closing deals? <laughs> uh, learning that I did not attach my emotions to the close. My, my favorite part of when a deal closes now is that I enjoyed the process as much as I enjoyed the closing. That I enjoyed providing the value as much as I provided receiving the value. 
and what I can do with what I receive at closing is exciting as well, allowing it to come through me with my appreciation, my gratitude, and my own values to give it away to others. And that's uh, the from, the through, and the to. My favorite part of closing, besides the emotional aspect of being proud of myself, to not attach my emotions to that. Uh, what percentage of deals should we be closing? 100% of those that are aligned uh, with the 120 rule. 100% of the deals that you could articulate more value than you're asking for uh, should be there. Heroes. This is one of my heroes. The incredible Laura Wilde. That's right. The NBA mental performance coach. What a season that was. There she is. Hi, Dave. Hi. How are you? I'm geeked up this morning. How are you doing? Same. I'm so fired up, except for the wrong LA team won the championship. What happened? Man, I mean, I'm okay if LA wins something, but I certainly would like to be thinking about ring ceremonies and parades. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I know they'd be giving you a ring for sure. You know, my other friend, she's a sleep doctor for the Nationals, and they won four road games uh, for the World Series, and they gave her a ring. So she teases me that I've been working in sports 35 years. I've never got a ring. And uh, sh there she was getting her first ring. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. I think you're the favorites for next year, though. So I think as a, a performance coach, you have done an extraordinary job. Uh, but tell me what's going on with COVID and how you've been helping people to maximize their performance and take advantage of the accelerated change that we're in to see those opportunities that actually exist. Well, you know, uh, it's actually the perfect time for us to practice what we preach which is, you know, how being uncomfortable and being outside your comfort zone is something we can move past. So my favorite thing is just to teach people to get in the zone more often. Because I think with COVID, we've realized like, oh, I was not in the zone. I was operating at a low level. So now meditation becomes more important. And even though this time is really rough and tough, and for some of us and some people more tragic than others, you know, people actually have a focus on mental health now. So now there actually is a spotlight and I feel like my work is more valued and it's kind of the, you know, the other side of this all is that people are realizing, wow, I really need more things and more tools. So giving people tools like meditation, getting in the zone and just an affirmation every day. I wake up every day and I say, today is the most magnificent day of my life. And then it, it is more often than not. Right. And I say it if it doesn't feel like it might be because, I'm not asking, I'm claiming it ahead of time. And you and I know that, like in metaphysics, claim it ahead of time and then you'll see it happen. So. Yeah, <laughs> and I think, of, I think of the word commandment, which is confusing to most people. People confuse the word command with demand. And I command the universe, which means I work with the universe. So those mantras that I have, I am worthy, I am blessed, I am grateful, all the ones that I say in the morning to make sure that to me, as pain arises during the day, which it always will, that it's just an indicator, a turn signal that something better, I got to learn a lesson to get to what's better, but I will. When I think about the zones that you teach, one of the uh, diagrams that I utilize to explain what you teach, Laura, is th there's a circle that's a comfort zone, and then a learning zone, which you call the zone. And then there's the anxiety zone. And people that live in the comfort zone never change, right? They, they sit at home high on their mom's couch, broke, drunk, blaming everybody else, dreaming about what they want and never getting any of it. Then you have the learning zone people that are constantly expanding. And if yeah. you can stay in the learning zone, your learning zone soon becomes the size of your anxiety zone and your anxiety zones way out here. One of the things I wanted to ask you is during, hey, D Brown, look at that. You got a fan. D Brown is uh, in the house. Your boy, hey D, ever. when are you gonna join us again? We love you. You're the man, <laughs> incredible. Amazing. I'm a huge fan. Anyway. <laughs> and he he knows this stuff. He's a mindset yeah. king and a heart set king. So Absolutely. how do we get people to understand? Because if you stay in the anxiety zone, as we in some people are right now, anxiety is up twice as much, you know, 100% increase. People that stay in the anxiety zone, they're worse off than the comfort zone people because it actually keeps constricting down and it actually can affect what you're comfortable doing. That's why people start using things that are damaging to themselves, drugs, alcohol, negative thoughts. And pretty soon it also causes nervous breakdowns and suicide. That's how people shrink their learning zone. Not by, I mean, comfort zone, not by staying in the comfort zone, but by staying in the anxiety zone too long. How do you coach people to identify when they're in the anxiety zone and then what to do when they realize they're in the anxiety zone? 
Well, first, I like to teach people to do simple stuff. Like, you may not be able to sit and meditate for 10 minutes, but you can certainly stop doing everything and just close your eyes and wait until the breath finds you. I say, stop, don't breathe, let the breath find you. And then in that little tiny moment of breath, something finds you with a greater power than you. So if you can allow the breath instead of breathing, you can recognize, oh, wait a minute, obviously I'm meant to be here because I'm not breathing me, something's breathing me. So for me, simple things like that are great. Um, journaling is very important. They actually say that journaling can help people get through depression. And I, you know, I myself have had to use all of my tools during this time period, more than ever before. I mean, I'm like, wow, how am I helping all these people while well, I'm also going through the anxiety? But that's real, right? So I'm using more meditation, all my affirmations, but having an affirmation that's a fallback every time is really valuable. One that I write on my wall, it's all over the place. So it gets me back and, and snaps into my happy place, right? And what about putting something on your phone? So every once in a while on my phone, something pops up and says, you are meant for great things. Oh yeah, I forgot. So these are just reminders, right? Because our soul knows the truth of what we're here for and why we're here. And finding your biggest why right now during COVID is so important. And you talk about that a lot. Like, what's your why? And why are you going to make it through all of this? Who are the people that you love? And what about texting? Like for me, texting is one of my best therapies. Text someone you haven't texted in a while, send them a great message. Because if you're giving, you're going to get it back. That's awesome. I keep now in the journaling respect, I keep a Word document open on my computer at all times. So that as I'm working during the day, or I call it activity I get paid for, when something comes to mind or a negative thought comes to mind or whatever, I actually will type out the solution or the mantra or the correction, the cancellation of the negativity right into a Word document right next to me and then just, you know, fold, let it fold down again. One of the other things that I think of when, you know, I've talked to you and D as a coach, I, I started realizing time is such a variable that where we spend our time. And I came up with this concept of min minutes and moments. Um, and it's because I've wasted so much of my time with worry, anger, anxiety, frustration, resentment, offense, separateness, inferiority, superiority, all these ego-based consciousness, primary and secondary fear that not only got in my way as a business person, but in my personal relationships. And even as I look back, I know I wasn't an extraordinary athlete uh, like the ones that you deal with, but as an average division three college player, I was in my own way, right? And I could have been so much more of my potential with what I was given uh, in talent wise and skills, knowledge and desire wise. These minutes and moments are essential to teach people, you know, why, why are you living in that space when you could learn just to live there for minutes or moments and get back to what you're talking about, the power of the source, power of light, love, and lessons. When you close your eyes for those 10 seconds and realize what we're connected from, through, and to, it all comes together. And I want you, because you have such a great way of articulating these things, to tell me about how we get people just to stay minutes and moments in places they don't want to be and live in that light. Yeah. Well, one of the things I've been doing lately, which seems to be really powerful, is I have people ask a big, huge question because we can't ask a question outside of the universe. So like, you know, uh, who or what must I become in order to be the best mental performance coach in the NBA? Or even bigger, who or what must I become to be the, uh, a dynasty leading NBA mental performance coach? Because the universe is gonna show you how. Like, don't ask why me, why me? Ask. Who or what must I become in order to do this? Because the universe will show you the signals. But then you can't just ask a big question. You have to close your eyes and do what I call superhuman mental reps. Because if you do superhuman mental reps, then I see myself like, maybe I see myself with 10 rings and like players who felt transformed because really the purpose is not the ring, right? It's the transformation of people we work with and serving and giving back. Because when you give back, you're gonna feel filled up. And that to me is the only way I can feel filled up Making a lot of money doesn't make me feel filled up. Getting a new car doesn't. But giving really powerful tools to people. But that big question is actually something that is, is very life-changing. Who or what must I become in order to do this? Or what's the nature of feeling happy right now? If you're feeling depressed, ask, what's the nature of feeling happy? Because the answer is going to be show, showing up in your life. Or you might look over here and see a picture that you haven't seen in a while. You might hear a song. So if you really get in touch with and be in alignment with all that beautiful source energy, it's going to be lifting you up from the inside because the outer world can't be the thing that lifts us up because it's uh, not dependable. And 
it's not something we can control. So if we're trying to control stuff, we're going to not play the right game, you know? So surrendering a little more and a little more and a little more. That's right. You get your allowance by asking and you're just such a great icon of asking. And I love the idea. You can't out ask the universe. And I want people to realize that, that we're always limiting ourselves because you can never out ask, ask too often or ask too big of the universe. It's abundant. We're here for an instant minutes and moments between limitlessness and infinity. And that creates the fear that people cannot even understand. And I love when you say, you know, I want 10 rings. I want, I always, I've added one word and I want everyone to add this word, including Dee Brown. I want a minimum, right? I, I, I look, I want to empower a minimum of a billion people in the world. I want to empower over a billion people to be happy. Yeah. <laughs> you never, you never, never, never out. We, you know, I was blessed. I share my Lakers seats with Diane Cannon and I was born on January 11th. Uh, at 111. And I always say that's the sign of the angel. I'm here. My name means beloved servant. So I, I know I'm here for a purpose. So I go, oh, yeah, I'm going to die at 111 at 111 on January 11th. I know it. And she started literally tearing up because see, I did too. I'm like, what's the matter? She goes, why are you limiting yourself? And it was like such a mind blower because I was a lot younger than I am now. And she was one of my gurus and mentors. She's this unbelievably gorgeous, healthy, wise, 85 year old woman. And I'm sitting there going, Oh my God, why am I limiting myself? I got to figure out a new 111 to live through. Uh, <laughs> anyway, what's your last piece of advice as we move on throughout the last six months, a lesson that you've learned or something that you think can really help other people? Well, I've been reading the Ray Dalio book principles and he keeps talking about letting your dream be steeped in reality. And for me, reality really is what we create and how we can perceive things. So it doesn't mean the reality of, oh, oh, woe is me. It means creating a new reality. But when you mix that with determination, which I think has really been a key for me in my life. When I look back, sure, I meditated, I got in alignment, I was using metaphysics, but the determination that you set forth to reach your dream, because if you don't have the determination, anything can stop you, right? But the determination to break through whatever it takes and to really see the end first, right? You have to really see where you're going. And that's why you ask that big question. I write down big, huge things that seem impossible because, um, you know, Alice in Wonderland is my favorite book as a kid. Why well, I've done as, as many as six impossible things before breakfast. So if you can look at nothing is impossible because what you said about limitless and infinity is amazing. And we have to spend more of our moments and minutes in, in a space of closing our eyes and envisioning and imagining all that's possible for us because anything's possible. Anything. Anything possible, and you're proving that. Laura Wild, at Laura Mitchell Wild. Where else can they find you? Uh, LauraMWild.com. And uh, I'll have my three gems of mental performance ready, like as a free download uh, in a few hours. So I love to share this <laughs> if you guys want it. You're amazing. Please keep in touch with me. Send my love to everyone. Keep expanding, growing, and accelerating. And most importantly, empowering others to empower others to be happy and to create the abundance in their life that they deserve, including the LA Clippers. So thanks so much. Thanks for having me so much. Appreciate it. I'll see you soon. Bye. You're incredible. You're incredible. I you love you. Ah, there's a winner. Amazing, right? Amazing. My favorite book, by the way, my favorite children's book is The Monster at the end of the book. It's Grover who tells you not to turn the pages, but at the end, through all the fear, it's just him at the end of the book. Lovable, cuddly Grover. And that's the story of your life. There's just you. You got, you know, my dad gave me a jacket with no pockets because at the end, I can't take anything with me when I'm gone. Robert Mondavi, the incredible Mondavi family. And Robert, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We had so many great people here. Uh, in incredible. I know. Uh, oh, Jake's telling me that Christian Biscardi's here. Uh, he's uh, doing all kinds of cool stuff. Ultra entrepreneur, my friend with Derek Mobility. They have the most innovative new electric engine and car. And there we are. Did I hit? How are you? <laughs> Was that Sammy? I guess. Hello. Hey, how are you? <laughs> who's, who's your camera woman? Uh, so only one person, and I had a phone call that was coming in that she was rejecting as, a, as we were coming live. <laughs> That's so cool. Tell her I said hi. 
Hello, hello a, from David. <laughs> How are you, David? Hey, um, so I want I wanted to talk to you because you brought me in as an advisor to a killer company. I, I have to tell you, in the last twenty years, probably almost since Westlaw, have I not wow. been so excited about it? I I'm excited about overactive media, about Queens, about esports, about CBD. I mean, there's a bunch of stuff I work on, but <laughs> Derek Mobility has to be the biggest opportunity that I've ever been involved with. And, you know, I am so excited to be on the board of advisors, to be a part of it, and would love for you to kind of share the evolution of what's going on. I know they're starting to launch uh, their Derek Mobility, the smaller vehicles. Uh, yes. Maybe you could tell me what's going on there. Cause I, I'm, I ordered my first one myself. I'm so excited, they're super cool. You're tell me soon? a little yeah. bit about yeah. Derek Mobility. Get it, yeah. Tell me a little bit about it. I know you and Sammy are working as well hard on it. Yeah, so you know, just a quick overview. Um, Derek Mobility is a division of Derek Automotive Technologies. Um, we are an electric car company. We have some really awesome technology where we use a sip of gas that powers two EV batteries that powers the car uh, like an electric vehicle. Um, it so has, you never have to plug it in? You never have to plug you, it in? You never have to plug it in. Uh, so this is a non-plug electric vehicle. It is the only one that exists. Actually, people can plug into the car, right? You can. You can plug into the car for power um, because our <laughs> engine is, is basically a generator. Yeah. And, it, and so it's like a tank of gas. How many miles can you get on a tank of gas? So it's looking like a 10-gallon tank of gas is going to take us about 2,500 to 3,000 miles. Oh, my gosh and so yep. the derek mobility side of derek automotive because i know they have an accelerator mm -hmm. an incubator yep. down in florida building all types of technology from delivery vehicles to big truck vehicles to regular truck mm -hmm. vehicles to luxury cars suvs i mean everything's applicable well, you can even retrofit yep. it in a tesla to you know turn you out sure the biggest can. complaint <laughs> of tesla which is my bat i gotta go charge my battery you never have to That's charge your battery it. in a tesla there's so many things you can do, but you know, I saw you tooling around with Sammy down at the shore. Uh, oh, yeah. g give me a little background on what you're doing with the mobility side. Sure. So that's our, you know, one of our biggest and first fundraising efforts to Derek Automotive. Um, so, so basically, what we're doing is we're, we're using our electric bikes, and we launched our, our mobility division. We have two of our smaller products, like you mentioned, the Little Lover and the Entertainer. Um, so there's plenty of links on my. Bio that was my old nickname, Christian. Well. That was my that was my old nickname, the Little Lover. Yeah, <laughs> so we named it after you. You didn't know. That. Yeah, thank you. Um, so these are our first two products. We have more awesome products coming. Everyone's pretty much familiar with that Vespa scooter look. So we have an electric scooter coming very soon. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And we also have a deliver delivery electric uh, bike that is the first in the industry that we believe that has the uh, temperature control case on the back. So it's not just for food delivery. Um, it's also for medical delivery, ice cream, flowers, and even hopefully vaccines one day uh, to transport. Or even testing. We could have the first mobile testing. I talked to Chris Yard, one of my partners, and a few others, uh, you know, whipping up and doing those quick tests that they have now as well. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, when you have disruptive technology like that, and you're, you're starting off, you know, it's one of the biggest challenges that I have is, one, educating the marketplace. And then, two, I mean, in the space alone, in the truck EV space alone, for example, there's been companies that, that I've done due diligence on that have raised like 2.8 billion with a B from yes. Ford and Chevy and Cox, uh, Black, I mean, er, every single big uh, venture capital firm is getting behind this mm -hmm. disruptive technology. You know, how do you go to bed at night knowing that you're sitting on what may be the most advanced of all those tech. I mean, think about it. you have the regenerating electric car that's yeah. technology that's proven, and you actually have a, a working prototype. This is not vapor, which some of the yeah. other companies are raising billions off of vapor. No, uh, yeah, pun it's intended. a real thing. <laughs> yeah, and and you yeah. have all these different divisions. How do you? How, how literally? And I know a lot of entrepreneurs have this problem, and you know, yeah. and you're a, a, a type A super powered entrepreneur that must be what he can be. How do you sleep at night? Uh, I guess the short answer is I don't. Uh, so, <laughs> so I, I um, everyone, I guess if friends are watching, they're going to laugh because they know I'm in bed rather early. But I am up, you know, as early as humanly possible to kind of get the day started. So uh, I guess that's the short answer. Um, but, uh, you know, as far as the directive technology, we are a tech company. So 
we want to disrupt every industry that we can electrify with our technology. Automotive space is just our very next um, little project that's launching within Derek Automotive Technology. So our Derek Mobility is really paving the way um, to what we can do, drawing attention to the company and really, really raising our fundraising efforts. That's amazing. That last question real quick. So, sure. you know, I believe in a spying strategy. People are like, how the heck are you involved in so many things? You have mm -hmm. the podcast, the TV shows, the executive coaching, the books, the speaking, all the things that you do. How do you do it all? You're one of those people as well, Christian. You, and, you know, besides having one of the best girlfriends in the entire world, or fiance, as <laughs> fiance I call it, guys. Fiance, yeah. Fiance. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing, but, you know, you lucked out. Don't blow it. Uh, but beyond that, I believe in a spying technology when you have capabilities that are aligned synergistic to what's doing well now, what's stable now, and what may do well in the future. And you're the king of this. Like you are involved in all types of energy-based things or automobile-based things. That's your spine as, as far as yeah. what I've seen it. You've dealt with solar, you've dealt with all types of energy and automobiles. And those are sure. also passions of yours. They, you know, they, they rock you every single day. So yeah. you created another company, which I'm really excited about and involved with as well, you know, because mm -hmm. I have a passion uh, with cars and uh, which is why I love working with you. But you created yeah. a company called Stable that yeah. can find the greatest exec, exe, uh, exotic cars and vehicles for people all around the world at the best prices. Yes. So this is, uh, I guess you could say something I did selfishly. So this is a uh, really passion of mine. And uh, it, I guess it really spawned from my fiance telling me I wasn't allowed to buy another car before we got married. So um, I, I broke that promise, unfortunately. Um, but we did launch the Stables Fine Motor Cars. We are brokering uh, some of the, the rarest cars you can find or even normal supercars that you might want to look for. But we're also doing normal cars, too. Uh, you know, as a young company, we want to give ourselves as much possibility to sell cars as possible. So um, even BMWs, Mercedes, we're looking to help people find. Um, and our biggest thing is we want to help entrepreneurs and help individuals step themselves into that, that next car up. Um, for me growing up, and I know a lot the same for you, is how can you push yourself and push your income to get you into that next car? Um, that's really what does it for a lot of people, especially car guys. Um, so, you know, we really want to, you know, empower entrepreneurs. Um, if you're looking for a car, you know, we always ask for support from, from entrepreneurs as well. And we want to try our best to find you, you know, the car of your dreams. That's awesome. My only mistake I made, uh, biggest mistake, I say not only mistake, I make mistakes every day. I apologize. The yeah. biggest mistake I made, I did a video about starting with $1,000 and flipping cars. And I got up to a G-Wagon and I loved yeah. it so much. I screwed up because I started driving it and my wife got uh, mad at me I and I gave it to my daughter. She wanted to use it. And yeah. then it got, it got it broke. I mean, I, it was a disaster. I took away yeah. almost all my profit from building from $1,000 up to this you know, unbelievable yeah. G wagon that I got at auction. Uh, so, but it, it is a commodity. You know, I love cars because it does fulfill an energy, a passion, but it also is at its essence, you know, if you're good at buying a car, buying low enough, you, there's right. margins of millionaires in there that you can help to share with people that are looking for their dream car. Mm -hmm. And look, I'm all for people experiencing and learning from it. I drive a Volt right now uh, mm -hmm. and, you know, but I definitely have fun with other people's car. I rent cars. I borrow my, my own daughter's cars, but I keep my humility at a, at a Volt level right now, but I can't I wait understand. to get my, <laughs> my Derek automotive SUV. That's my, my next it's upgrade. Fun. My wife keeps bothering me and I'm going to retrofit my daughter's <laughs> Tesla. So we're, we're all over Derek automotive. I'm all over Love staple. It. I got all my friends listening right yeah. now. That's <laughs> my man to go get us cars and he will make sure that we are profitable, passionate, and purposeful with our automobiles in the world because there's less carbon, by the way, there's less carbon output on the Derek Automotive cars than any other, even a Tesla, because it builds its own energy. It can, with less carbon output than, than the grid. So it's, it's extraordinary. Um, where can people find you, Christian? So you can find me on Instagram. It's just underscore. My last name is Biscardi. They can find us on Derek Mobility. It's just at Derek Mobility. And you can find us on at the Stables Fine Motor Cars, all on Instagram. Um, the Stables, we have a YouTube launching very soon, so you can see some of the cars that we're, we're working with. Um, and if you need any help with cars, you're looking for electric bikes, you can message myself, Derek Mobility, or the Stables, and we'll get right back to you with an answer. 
you got it. Any of my followers, you can contact me. We talk daily, Christian and I, heavily involved in this project, super believer. And I'll tell you why. When we talk about Christian, I talk about someone that has the desire that he must be what he can be. I got to let you go, brother. I got Robert Robert Mandavi, the Mandavi dynasty, man. I I got all the winners today, Laura, you, and Robert on. So thank you so much, Sammy, Sammy, for me. Get that bike to me so I can create some videos, man. I can't wait. A couple weeks you'll have one, I promise. All right. Take care, Christian. I'll see you later, David. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Bye now. All right, the great Christian Biscardi. Check it out. Derek Automotive, Derek Mobility, and Stable. Get your cars, get your bikes, get your unbelievable electricity uh, there. Biscardi is a savage. Yeah, he is. And Sammy's amazing. She's one of my favorites, faves. Blaine, good morning, my friend. There's Robert. Thank you for your patience, my friend. We're going to let the great Robert Mandavi join us here and uh, talk about what's going on in the wine industry because nobody knows it better uh there he is good morning hey, good morning all right i love to meet people on zoom this is amazing how are you you know we are um out here in south carolina normally a, a wine guy would be in napa valley we had all those terrible fires this year so we retreated to uh our cottage that we have out here in south carolina my wife's people are from out here so uh, I head back on Thursday to survey damage, unfortunately, and to uh, kick it in the butt and get going. You know, I'm doing a lot of consulting up there right now because of the insurance issues. Uh, most people don't realize that the evolution of insurance in wineries, because and this is how, how global warming affects things. And the, the heat of the fires are hotter uh, yeah. because uh, of global warming, right? The growth is different. And what happened on this fire is normally we've never had to insure the actual vineyard part because the the fires wouldn't get hot enough to, to burn the vineyard. They would burn the structures. So all the great vineyards usually aren't insured on the vineyards. They're insured on the structures. And this fire was so hot. It was the first time that it destroyed uh, the vineyards, which when, when you're destroying something that's uh, perishable by time, uh, it has extraordinary damages. Um, you know, where where do you see when you go back up there the opportunities from what has happened? Is there going to be a roll up? Is there a redevelopment in technologies to enhance the wines quicker? What, what do you see happening? You know, it's it's a great question. And there's there's a few Easter eggs within there. So the, the first is when we in the 1990s, they had phylloxera, which is uh, essentially a critter, the bug that wiped out most of the grapevines in California, in Napa Valley. We replanted with better style, better quality of grapevines and the industry got better. It's, I think, because of the American spirit, the American dream in Napa, starting vineyards and farming and making a luxury product, um, we innovate. And so we'll see more of that innovation again. <laughs> With respect to the fires, yes, there's a global warming aspect in why the fires were hotter, you're right. But also people are farming now without herbicides. And so they mow underneath the vines. And so now you have, um, instead of having just bare dirt because of herbicides, now you have a natural uh, uh, growth underneath. And so the fires come through underneath. And so then you have forest management issues, which is all political hot topic right now, which I, I'm yeah. staying <laughs> we'll stay out of there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's enough. There's enough political hot topics that you and I don't have to comment on. So uh, that's I mean Now you've also utilized this time, these last six months, to you like everyone else to extend or what I call amplify your business through video services. And right. how how have you amplified your business using you know video tastings, video communities, video uh, energy? I call it. How have you used content in that manner? So the, the content that we've utilized for this, what I call a live stream wine tasting has been remarkable. So we will take a Napa Valley tasting experience and essentially bring that into individual people's homes. So we will work with a host such as yourself and we'll curate a selection of beautiful Napa Valley wines like my Emblem Cabernet or my Relative Fine Cabernet. And then we will drop ship that into a multitude of clients' homes. And then we bring a talk uh, together about Napa Valley, about the wines. And so instead of just a one-way presentation where people are glazing over and listening, 
Now we have people smelling with the olfactory impact, tasting, thinking about their experiences uh, that they've had with wine. And the host also gets to have a presentation at the beginning. And so we've brought a really inclusive experience together. And I think the kicker on this, the best part is, this is one of the few business retreat style presentations you can do on a live stream where now you can invite the spouse or significant other and guest in for that fun part, the wine tasting part of the business seminar. And we've been slammed. It's been great to, to tack change and to have a new way to do business. Yeah, I, I think you need to, to scale that business too. I've uh, talked to Tillman Fertitta. I hope he's listening uh, because obviously the hyper quality of Landry's and Ocean Air, I mean, uh, uh, you know, these great yeah. Ocean Air is one of them. I was thinking Mastro's as well, uh, the yeah, Ocean yeah. Club. But you can imagine combining, you know, everyone's delivered, you know, they order off the menu, everyone's yeah. delivered their food at the same time. They jump online. You could have, you know, so, somebody, an ins inspirational speaker, an educational on the wine, the food, the guest chefs, you know, the Ming size of the world coming out for his stuff or whatever. And I, you know, I think this is something that will go beyond the pandemic. I, I think this is a very enjoyable way. Like for example, I have a very large family and we're all, <laughs> and I would really enjoy at least once a month having that experience with my family. Uh, and then I have a group of friends from college, a group of friends from law school, you know, old friends from elementary school. And you know, I, I think that there's a huge void that needs to be filled. And obviously you guys are jam packed. Uh, with not just wine, but with the whole experience of being able to extend out those great places to everywhere in the country, because the last mile keeps getting better and better and the speed and efficiency and accuracy gets better and better. And the quality, I mean, obviously wine doesn't literally uh, have any effect. You, I think there's a great lesson because I'd like to learn it when, when you have one of these uh, to learn how, okay, I got the Mondavi wine now when's the best time to open it, right? Yeah. How, where do I put it? How do I actually serve it so that I'm getting the greatest experience, which I think will enhance people buying more wine because they're actually utilizing it in the right way. So it's like a recipe. If, if uh, you, I send you something, you're not cooking it correctly, you're not gonna enjoy it as much. Your wine's not enjoyed as much if people aren't preparing it correctly before or eating it with the right foods or, or whatever it yeah. is. You know, it's, it's been so neat to see the evolution of wine over the last, you know, 30 years, where back in the era of my father, Michael, who co-founded Robert Mondavi Winery, we, they would sell luxury tier wines to put in a cellar to age. And now in the last decade, we as a wine industry are trying to create wines to age, but also, so you bring it home, you pop that cork and pour it in a glass and it's ready to go. It's ready to rock and roll. Uh, but also there's a beauty and enjoyment of aging wines because they evolve differently like people do. A young wine, you know, within five years of age is like a, a person in their 20s. Uh, a wine that has five to 10 years of age is like a person in their 30s. They're still, they're, they're wonderful conversationalists. They have more to offer. And so, you know, eventually the bloom comes off the rose. But, uh, <laughs> but really, yeah. it's neat to see the evolution of wines. I should do a tasting for, uh, for you and, and your buddies because... It is fun to interact with your friends and to taste with them. Yeah, I would love to. And we can, you know, put in some great content with that as well and amplify it to many other people so that they can see what that's like. And I also was thinking I have a company that I work with named Verb that has a streaming live ability to order. So oh. while you're streaming, you have yep. a direct button just to click if you want to, if you like that wine, everybody can order it for themselves that is watching, viewing, repurposed yep. and amplified. So uh, they're here in Newport Beach is a great company. La last question yep. real quick, because yep. you know, I, I deal with a lot of entrepreneurs and I have my own four children. They obviously love what I do. I, I have a very broad area from sports to entertainment, you know, TV shows, social media, and each of the kids have a different personality and they're leaning towards maybe working with me someday or, or in synergy with a partner. And obviously you have worked you with your dad, who is a big brand, a big entrepreneur. And so I'd love for you to share with people, you know, the positive and kind of the negative of, of growing up thinking, you know, do I have to work for my father? Do I work? And, and what that relationship is like, because I think a lot of people, especially now, 
you know, that working remotely are seeing more of what their parents do and, and mm -hmm. want to work more with their family. So I'd love for you to share the lessons you've learned there working with your father. Yeah, the, there's a few great questions wrapped up. And uh, one of the, the ones that can be daunting at times, especially for your family, you have a personality and people know you. And it's gonna, the conversation for them is going to be, I had this experience with your father, that experience, we did this together. And that, that, that is heavy for a while but they will learn to uh, turn the corner and to utilize that as the door opening. But once they're in that door, then it's their performance. So that's gonna be a great asset for them. Then to onboard and work with you or for any family business, the biggest advice I can give somebody is so silly, so easy, good fences make good neighbors. Great job description of what are their expectations? Um, why? because you need to rely on their performance and they need to rely on you as their boss or somebody within the, your organization so that there's a measuring stick. So when your kids perform, you can hold them accountable to good performance like anybody else. When they don't perform, you can also do that. And so can the person that they report to within your organization. That is so key. And then a roadmap. Is it a one year, three year, five year plan? You hit X milestones, the company's performing, we can move you to Y, then to Z. But you have to have these expectations and these fences, otherwise you fall back into parent and child relationship of debate and expectation that's not clear. So good fences make good neighbors, job descriptions and expectations are essential. And then there's other coaching beyond that, but that's about as condensed as I can make that for our talk right now. That's a fabulous answer and great input. And I want to, as a parent, be aware of that. Because the first part I knew only because I've kind of been a child uh, in my career to great people like Lee Steinberg or Warren Moon, where you're kind of in the shadow. You know, I, I've literally have been sitting there talking to, to one of those great icons. And it's not just the guys that I work with that were my business partners, but you know, the, the Evander Holyfields and the, you know, you're there and people will literally just put their back to you and start talking to the person. And, you know, th there's these lessons and everything's relative to, oh, you know, this is Lee Steinberg's guy. Oh, this is Warren Moon's partner. You know, I, before I started building my brand three and a half years ago, I don't think 90% of the people that I did business with knew my name. Like yeah. I, I literally, if, if you would ask them, do you know Dave Meltzer? They would say, that's familiar. And until they saw my picture, they would have told, yeah. oh yeah, that's Lee's guy. Oh, that's Warren's partner. Th that's literally, and you probably had, that's Robert's son. You know, luckily have the same name at least. Uh, Absolutely. And so I, 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 knew that, I knew that part was difficult. And I've been coaching my kids to whatever they do to use every advantage they have to get in the door. But once that door opens, you got to be the bull in the china shop. You, oh, you've yes. got to be the Binks will bow because it, that's where it is. And I have fought so hard to get into the door myself that when I got into the door, nothing was going to stop me. I want to make sure they know that although I can open the door for them, that they have to have that desire to must be what they can be. And that the, the, at the doors where da daddy stops, the reputation means nothing. In fact, there'll just be more pressure on you because they're gonna come to your dad and say, hey, your son disappointed me, your daughter disappointed me or whatever, you're gonna feel that. But I love uh, the, the fe good fences make good neighbors. Is that is that how you say it? Yeah, well, you know, I try to make it really condensable and people get that. Where are the rules of engagement? And then there's something else, David, which I forgot to mention. What are the expectations for a family member beyond the job description? And that's something that's hard to quantify and hard to measure, but it really does need to be discussed. You just mentioned people are going to hold your kids more accountable to what they say they're going to do. And that's absolutely true. So that's the unspoken part of the job description that needs to be written out to coach the, these kids who have this amazing opportunity into that level of success that they can have. And, and it's, it's fascinating when you have opportunity, how you can squander it and not even know that you did or how you can make, make a success of it because of a couple little coaching points. Yeah, it's amazing. Farming, wineries, race car driving, uh, those are all family businesses that I've coached in to executives and younger executives that have these issues. So it's really nice to get your feedback. Because I know a lot of people out there, you know, whether they're in those bigger high profile industries or just have their dads, you know, granite 
business, you know, granite countertop business, it's the same thing. You know, within yeah. the context of granite, if your dad's the king of granite and you're going into your dad's business, you might as well be Robert Mondavi in the yeah. wine business. It's the same thing. And your circles of spheres of influence will have the same pressures and the same opportunities. And yeah. I think that's so valuable. Hey man, we got to do this again. Let's, let's do yep. uh, one of these uh, things. I also want my friends out there to, to reach out to you because I think this is a great idea and I want to do some family experiences for people. No better way to share a night than a glass of wine and to have old time discussions. Don't wait till someone dies to yep. sit Shiva, I always say, in the Jewish tradition. You know, yep. do it while we're alive. Those same stories mean even more when everybody's present. Oh, I agree. Well, you, they can get a hold of me you, uh, through my Instagram account. That's the fastest and easiest way. It's real simple. Rob Mondavi. Um, I'm the goofy looking guy on there and it has some really great fun content. But Rob Mondavi on Instagram is easy and just a DM through. And, and that's I love that because we had good communication. I can check out, you know, who you guys are and you can check me out. We can really start a positive relationship. I love being on here today and talking with you. I can't wait to talk with you more. Yeah, me too. And here's the goofy guys. Thanks for <laughs> <laughs> take care. <laughs> right Salud. Salud. Rob Mandavi. Check him out at Rob Mandavi. Obviously, you can't beat the brand. You can't beat the quality. There's a reason they're so successful. And now you know uh, apples don't fall far from the tree, just like Jakey Bakey. Apples don't fall far from the tree. He has extraordinary parents uh, as well and his whole family. And they have a big celebration this weekend. His brother's getting married. So congratulations, Jakey Bakey. Soul Power Music, good to see you here. Everybody, this Friday is how to close a deal. If you have missed any of my trainings, they're featured on Spotify. There's a whole playlist featured on Spotify of all my trainings, number one downloaded podcast. Uh, you got to check it out, the playbook. You'll love it, uh, especially the trainings. But I do have some big guests like Rob Mandavi coming on, but there's... Uh, you know, everyone from Cameron Diaz to Dan Aykroyd to Ray Lewis to all your favorites. It's amazing. We'd love to have you. If you want any of the exercises, guides, or books, all you got to do is email me, david at dmeltzer.com. I'll send them to you free. I'll sign a book and send it to you for free. I'll pay for shipping. Don't worry. I want to empower you to empower others to be happy. Okay, that's it. Samir, welcome, number 21, Bainte Uno Clementes carry on uh what a great number that is if you haven't joined my text community Gemma has she's there at gifsa what a great way to deliver gifts to people like a pizza 949-298-2905 949-298-2905 uh join me let's uh take one question and then we'll call it a day i think i got a speech in a couple minutes so they're gonna get mad at me for taking this question what's the week's friday training on oh thank you so much uh, it is on closing the deal. Let me just, uh, you see this. I used to be a, a student, but I've lost my motivation for school. Motivation gets you up, gets you back up, gets you started. Get motivated. Find the light, the love, and the lessons of what you're learning. Learn to take out the trash and love it. Learn to study and love it. Learn to go to class and love it. You got to take a minute, like Laura said earlier, close your eyes and find the light, the love, and the lessons of what you're doing. Do not move until you can find the enjoyment of the consistent, persistent pursuit of your potential at school, which are A's. That grade is A's. It opens opportunities and options. If you need to connect to those options, then do that. Anyway, I got to jump to a speech real quick. We got Tech Day. I'm keynoting that right now. Um, please reach out to me, david at dmelcher.com for anything you need. Join me Friday for trainings or replays featured on Spotify, featured on Entrepreneur, on every platform, the playbook, david at dmelcher.com. Text me and join my community, 949-298-2905. And remember, everybody, most importantly, you got it. Be kind to your future self and do good deeds like Laura Wilde, like Christian Biscardi, and of course, the unbelievable Rob Mondavi. Check them all out. Thank you so much. Be kind. See you tomorrow.